Well, I think the great, <laughs> like, all the greats, they have an alter ego, you know? When it comes yeah. to entrepreneurship, when it comes to me wanting to make money, what would that money be for? Am yeah. I making money for money's sake? Status? I'm in the same, in the same boat, you know? Yeah. Like, I want to make a lot of fucking <laughs> money, man. I want to make a lot of fucking right. money, but I want to do a lot of good with that money. Yeah, the biggest transfer of wealth is, mm -hmm. Warren Buff Buffett said it, the biggest transfer of wealth is going to happen through the energy and renewable energy yeah. um, industry. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Brandon Estrada with Hefe Media, where we sit down with game changers in their respective industries. Today, I'm sitting down with the total stud in the solar industry, Ronnie Rubio. Thanks, man. Thank you appreciate for being it. here, man. Like, total dude, stud, that's a compliment. Dude, uh, I appreciate all the kind words you said, like, walking in here. Yeah. I know I was a little late for the no, you're shoot good. today. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, I appreciate all the kind words. Like, this is a work in progress right now. This uh, podcast room is uh, about maybe 50% done. And I didn't want to postpone the um, the shoot, this sure, podcast sure. episode. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm glad that you're here. Um, yeah. You know, whatever. It is what it is. Um, maybe you could come back soon and um, <laughs> when it's, like, more complete. But it yeah. looks good. It sounds good. By the way, this is the first episode uh, at the office? At, not at the office, but the first episode in the podcast room. Oh, dope. Okay. So, yeah. I'm privileged, man. So, you're the what first a, one. What you're, an honor. You're, you're um, yeah. breaking the seal. What so. an honor, man. Yeah, no, the the, the office is dope. Thank I walked you, in and you have like a really good, I was thinking about what to say, but I, you have a really good like fine line between like work and play. There's really cool stuff. There's like the stock market up there. And yeah. You have like all these trends going on. It's cool, dude. It's I, li I like the office a lot. Thanks, I'm like low-key want to move in, but I'm yeah, not going to say that Yeah, we have like the standing desk and stuff. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. part of the, like, like before this office was like a lot more corporate. And now yeah. it's like, like if you look at the sign yeah. outside, it says corporate and marketing. Sure. And now it has like that mix of like corporate and marketing, yeah. you know, because like the, the, the sell side, the corporate side is more like, you know, uh, more, I guess, structured is more like sure. um, uh, straight. Cookie right? cutter. It's like cookie cutter. Maybe kinda. you could say cookie cutter, um, but marketing is like more of the play, right? Yeah. And so yeah. when we were like conceptualizing this office, we were, you know, um, yeah. we're, we're making sure that we had those those concepts yeah. in mind. Because um, we want to like, we want to be at work and have a, you know, productive days and right. stuff, but we don't want to feel like not wanting to be here we want sure. it to be fun when we're here yeah and and you want like personality in it for sure like if it was up to me i'm like, I'm like a huge nerd i'd have like anime. spider-man anime all my comic books like i have like one or two comic books so, behind me but yeah it's so it's, it's, i would not, have that i'm not like familiar with anime or anything but like w can you give me like a quick like scene or something like how they're very animated right That's yeah they call it anime yeah well <sighs> I'll give you like the cookie because there's like a bunch They're of like, animes. Da, 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 da. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> talk like that. <laughs> it's like it's like there's. Uh, it's funny every time I like I talk trash in fantasy football and I, I'm only in one fantasy football league. And whenever like the season starts, there's always a Cowboys fan in there. And I always, look to, I mean, I know you're a Cowboys fan, but yeah. I always like to talk trash to year, the Cowboys. It's our fan. year, <laughs> yeah, uh huh. Uh, past thirty years, um, but it, it it's so funny to talk trash though because it, it's just fun, right? You're yeah. a Cowboys fan, you know, you get. ESPN is going to, you know, um, talk you up. But I'll always have, like, a Naruto meme every time I play a Cowboys fan. And it's yeah. the coolest scene. I, I Like, it gives, always gives me chills where he, like, is going to attack his best friend. And he, like, activates a, like, certain mode. Okay. And he's, like, is, like, ready to fight. And it's just, like, not not even mm. a second, like, half a second. It always pumps me up. I don't know. Like, he's what's ready to your, attack. What's your, what's your, um, what's your, uh your arc ego or what's the type what's the word like your alter ego what's your alter my ego? alter ego yeah i don't know if i have an alter ego on, you gotta have an alter no, ego. no bro i don't like you gotta have an alter ego man i mean i don't even you know you gotta you gotta find your alter ego okay i'll find, you gotta alter find ego. your alter ego dude. yeah i could i mean my alter ego like do you mean like the person i i play like at the presentation when i do solar or like i what, mean whatever like, i'm not here to tell yeah you what you i'm kind of the same bro <laughs> like the same on a podcast okay. i mean find same your alter ego I'll, okay I'll i think um probably a demon, i think the bro. greats had yeah well i think <laughs> the great like all the greats they have an alter ego you know okay and so okay. i mean this is what i from what i i see I, I see what you're saying though I, 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 okay. Like I, a mode I you go saying. into, right? A mode you go into mm -hmm. whenever you need to go into that mode. Yeah. I don't know if it's like alter ego per se, but I know that it's like, so 
we'll put Naruto as an example. Like he has like a little demon in, and it, like it's Japanese culture, so a demon it doesn't have the same negative context as yeah. you know we do. It, it, we could just call him like a spirit. But we all have good and bad in it. Sure, us. we all have good and bad, especially like in Japanese culture. It's like yin, yin and yang, right? There's the good has a little bit of bad, and the bad has a little bit of good, right? Okay. So, but what's cool about that was that he uses Naruto uses what he had that was bad about him, and he turns it into good. Nice. And he has. And that's the point. Yeah, and that's the point, and like. Turn darkness the, into the light. Right. And the demon he has inside of him, he actually befriends that demon and he can dip into the demon's like power source to like activate this mode and basically use that to defend other people. Nice. You know, so it's it's cool. So I guess if that's what you're asking, like, yeah, that's what, what mode asking. do I activate? So you, you, yeah, you, you, I see what you're saying. You tap into yeah. that. To, yeah. What's his name? What's his name? Kurama. Kurama? Yeah. You tap into Kurama. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I, yeah okay, you I get are a nerd, so, yeah. I'm a super nerd, bro. You're a nerd. I'm a super nerd. I love it. I love uh, anime. I love my superheroes, bro. I, Yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. We uh, recently, X-Men 97. Like the, you remember the, did you ever watch the show, the X-Men animated series show? Mm-mm. I wasn't an anime guy. I was a like Fox 11. I was like a Fox yeah. 11, uh, Nickelodeon. Yeah. Um, you never see, you Pokemon. never saw, you never saw X-Men like. The, X-Men? You said X-Men? X-Men, yeah. Yeah, X-Men, X-Men, yeah. Yeah, yeah. X-Men, yeah. Okay, so the animated show, they, they, they're um, updating it. So they, they kind yeah. of a- added to it. And I like fell in love. I wasn't going to like it. I wasn't going to watch it. I don't like whatever Disney puts out, but. Um, I was actually very intrigued by the show, mm-hmm. and it's it's done. It's like done very well. Like okay. it's really really cool. And it's a like is it kind of like throwback or no? Yeah, it's basically whatever the X Men animated show was. Mm-hmm. It's just a continuation of it. Okay. But yeah, man, I love uh, and I'm not a big fan of X Men per se, but I love my superheroes, my anime, bro. I love the heroes, the hero's journey. Yeah, you know, I feel like For sure. hero's journey is really cool to see that in business, to see that in soul. I've seen like my journey in soul. It's always like these arcs, you know, and these these new arcs. Like I, we're like in solo right now. We're in the uh, the net energy metering 3.0 arc and how we're gonna overcome it, you know. Yeah. And, and before it was like the oh I'm in I'm doing accounting. Um, for my uncle arc should i go into sales arc you know yeah yeah, yeah. it went like to I w- i'm in sales now Your i evolution. have no deals arc you know so it's pretty cool so pretty cool. yeah uh talking about solar can you kind of share with me like your background how you got started yeah maybe just to educate some of the people that don't know who you are um get a little context on who ronnie rubio is and yeah yeah so i started off um in the solar industry, um, technically, if if you want to, if I want to be like super technical, I actually just started doing what we call pictographs at the beginning. Um, before I finished school, um, my uncle Nestor he had uh, his solar business basically going when I was like maybe 19 years old. Uh-huh. Um, but I hadn't finished school, and my goal had always been to finish college, right? So um, unfortunately. I went to college and unfortunately right. I finished because <laughs> um, I was going to have the, the world was going to be my oyster after I finished college. Yeah. So it turns out that's not true. They say um, like the marketing degree, the business degree, psychology degree, so psychology degree is like all like the same pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So like unless you're a lawyer or a doctor or engineer, yeah. like shut, shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, what's weird is that I, I actually got my degree in finance and yeah. usually accounting and finance, it's one of the higher paid ones, especially in the business uh-huh. college, in the business section, uh, business administration, the emphasis in finance actually would, it got me a job, Yeah, you know, but then continuing on and, and you, 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 you get a job and you kind of, realize that as you get these jobs i kind of learned that a job's not for me you know i'm not really an employee i don't have that yeah like, man because you're you're here in the on the hefe media podcast yeah <laughs> yeah right. so so um but the way i started off was um i had a plethora of jobs and then i finally finished college and then um basically it was around where my uncle became a contractor he actually was yeah. the official contractor so he had his financing and as he got the financing, he's like, hey, I, uh, we're, we're going to scale. Like, I need someone to do the books. Mm-hmm. I was like, sure. And it wasn't there wasn't that much accounting at that time. Yeah. Um, I wasn't just doing accounting. I was running permits. I was doing, pay- I was doing a yeah. lot of stuff, you're, right? You're getting the business going. Right. And what's weird is that I actually met two buddies of mine. Um, they ended up, one of them ended up becoming a groomsman at my wedding. He's basically my best friend. Um, but we actually started a 
um, an esports, I don't know if you remember, an esports for high school company. I think you told me about More it. More or less. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of like uh, um, we were just trying to bring esports leagues and develop mm-hmm. that into, into high schools. And then we were trying to work that. COVID killed it. And oh, yeah, then because yeah, yeah. um, the school shut down. So, um, so that went out the way, but I always had, I, like, it was true entrepreneurship. That was really, really, yeah. really pure entrepreneurship. But I ended up looking, um, at these checks that I was writing. Cause I wrote the checks. I'd give the reps these checks. Yeah. And like, I always say it, like there's a few reps and they kind of didn't know what they were doing at the time, but yet they're making all this money. I knew about solar because I worked the back end, because I worked the operation, because I worked the premise, because yeah. I ordered material, because I did some of the project management at the beginning. I knew how it works. So I was like, if I know, like I could easily explain it to someone. Yeah. You know? And then what got me was actually your first deal. Um, that kind of put me over the hump of like, I mean, and there was a lot of other things that put me over the hump of actually doing sales because I never went on an appointment. Yeah. And you kind of called me like, hey, can you do this appointment for me? Because I have no one to go on this appointment. Yeah. And then we went and I closed it. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and no, and it's 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 incredible, like the opportunity with solar. Yeah. And I like, dude, I want you to share like what the opportunity is because like yeah. people, I don't think people realize yeah. like the opportunity, like they feel like a lot of people – feel and this is what i kind of see sometimes is like yeah i gotta work hard i gotta work hard i gotta work hard and yes we yeah. gotta work freaking hard you know what i mean yeah but at the same time you can work smart and right. make a lot of money right you know um i mean it's a it's a inside game too you know yeah. it's an inside game it's not just like flashing things or whatever because that stuff as sure. soon as you get it it will go quick yeah you know what i mean yeah and and i know i feel what you're saying because there's always you're always got to be willing to put the work and um but at the same time you know you want your efforts to bear fruit for sure so what happens with solar the unique part and the opportunity that you have with solar is who does not want to save money it is always usually the best opportunity for the person to save money and the unique i haven't found an industry Mm -hmm. that is similar to solar in the sense that you have a bill Mm -hmm. you're paying it do you want me to lower it and not only lower it make it fixed that way you avoid cost today but also in the future you know what i mean no absolutely so that's the unique part about solar and it gives all the reps super like it gives all the reps a great opportunity to make money but also save people money too absolutely um and the unique part about where i'm at is i'm basically the contractor so like i have a direct connection with the contractor nester mm-hmm. who is the installer so a lot of times when a lot of people who are you know solar reps and mm-hmm. they are going to like a big company and i won't name them because yeah we don't need a name they're them. bankrupt and, we don't need and a name <laughs> they're going bankrupt and they, they sue me to get a penny but um right. but <laughs> they they will actually they'll go to a big giant sales organization and these big companies will just subcontract. You'll just, you'll just get a lot of Fugazi for guys. Yeah. Fugazi. We're the greatest, <laughs> fastest growing company. Oh, you know, and a lot of Fugazi for guys, Fugazi for guys, bro. But the reality is, is that I, and I always tell the clients this and I would tell the reps this too. Like, do you want to know who's installing your system? Yeah. Yes, I do. Okay. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. I'm installing your system. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? So that's the biggest difference with me and my team is that we have a contractor here. We're not subcontracting someone or yeah. they'll say they're in-house, but the reality is they're not in-house. And that's right? what I really appreciate you guys as California solar guys, right? Yeah. Um, I appreciate you guys because you guys might are, rebrand soon. But you guys are yeah, rebrand. We might. But yeah, that's why I said it like that. Ronnie like, Rubio Solar. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. So um, no, that's why I re- like, respect you guys because you yeah. guys are like the, to the source, you know, right. and I'm the to the source type of guy, you know, I don't want to like be the subcontractor of the subcontractor of the subcontractor that calls the other guy. Like, I'm not trying to do that. You know, like I want to know how much I'm going to get paid and I want to know like when I'm going to get paid. And like, I want to know, like, I want to, I want to feel like more close to the business, you know, whether I'm like more involved in the business or if I'm sending business. Cause like, as you know, like branding marketing, it's all about trust, you know, hundred percent. And if you like, start deteriorating that trust is Mm -hmm. like it's only gonna work against you you know and so like yeah maybe you'll make a little more in the short term but in the long term you're only gonna lose yeah i i i kind of the way i kind of put it is do you have a as a representative a rep right sales rep Mm -hmm. are you thinking of uh, do you have like a commission mindset or do you have like a business mindset so for example someone will go in 
and we love to give the customers the best experience. The yeah. reason why we can control that is because we are the actual contractor. We are the installer. So everything goes through us. Customer service goes through us. Permitting goes through us. Installation goes through us. And what's the demographic? Just to give context to the viewers. Yeah. You know, maybe there's somebody that's, you know, sure. that's, yeah. been, that's business minded, yeah. you know, and like what's yeah. the, what's the demo current demographic for, for, well, for this? The, a lot of people, um, you're talking about for the reps? For, for, for the reps? For, for, for us. For yeah. us. For so, us sitting here. So, um, the demographics like clientele usually is well. I should say geographics. Okay, that's so, what I really mean. So there's two people. There's two parties. Well, there's two parties. There's the client who uh -huh. is just a homeowner, husband, wife, um, married with kids, and um, they have a three hundred dollar bill, two hundred dollar bill, hundred dollar bill okay. a month. Right. That's that's like those are the clients. M the majority with us, you know, as the contractor, you know, we could target we could target our market and actually extend a lot of benefits of solar. It's actually like 95% of our clients are Latinos. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of Latinos in the industry get taken, unfortunately. No, I know. But the other demographic is basically just anyone who is willing to um, to work and to, you know, I don't want to speak generically, like put in the work, whatever. No, anyone who's willing to actually go and speak to homeowners, go and network and possibly do other lead gen stuff like door knock or cold car, whatever you do to get to get leads it's uh, whatever that is it's actually funny because like even though like door knocking is like people dread it you know what i mean it, yeah it's like a skill that should be developed you know like yeah. if you can develop that skill and be able to talk to strangers yeah. right and get the door slammed in your face whatever right. the case may yeah. be you know yeah um it's only going to help you in all areas of your life yeah you know no, yeah man and um, I, mean, I can't say that i found like a lot of success in door knocking but i found success in the perspective that i learned a lot about myself For when sure. it came to actually knocking doors getting rejected getting doors slammed in your face and um you learn when you learn that skill a lot of times just the skill itself just translate into everything else like Absolutely. the majority the majority of my deals have not been through door knocks but i still love the fact that i learned door knocking and yeah. i learned that skill and i got good and i was able to go to someone's house convince them to just hear me out and then at the presentation convince them to also and show them and explain to them the benefits of going solar. And then they yeah. made the decision to go to say yes and yeah. to go solar, you know? So that in itself, when you're able to conquer that, there's a lot of other aspects of life that you can conquer that. Okay. It, it translates. What, um, uh, so what areas, uh, are you guys covering right now? Like what areas are you able to install? Yeah. Uh, anyone watching this, you know, maybe they're, they're thinking about going solar. Like yesterday, yeah. for example, I was at a client's house that he just bought a house like sure. back in November sure, in San Pedro. <clears throat> and at some point I was like looking at his house and I was like, he needs to get solar in this yeah. bitch. <laughs> yeah, I, was like, I was like, he needs to get solar in this bitch. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, I, you know, I'll, I'll, follow, I'll follow up with him. Sure. Like people, <laughs> eventually everyone's going to go solar. Excuse me. <clears throat> you're good, I was man. getting you're like good. dust in my No, face. I know, you're good, you're good. <clears throat> I was going to say, um, eventually everyone's going to go solar. Yeah. Like that's where the trajectory is going, you know, mm -hmm. whether it be solar panels or any other, other type of innovation, right, like right, that's right, the, right. the direction that it's going. And so what areas are, are, are we servicing are you guys servicing right now? Yeah. So anything, <clears throat> the reality is anything that's PG and E Edison, PG and E, PG and E is Edison, uh, uh, PG and E Edison, or SDG &E. Those are the main utility companies. And then what's SDG and &E? SDG and E is San Diego Gas and Electricity. Okay, so San Diego, Edison, yeah, Edison, and PG and E PG &E. is oh, I forgot what PG and E was, but it's basically Northern California. Northern um, California. Yeah, the majority though, I will say, our cookie cutter is going to be Southern California Edison. Um, they have what about well, Pasadena? Pasadena Utility is great but they just have a low price per watt and they're very strict when it comes to actually selling solar, like, or actually, um, excuse oh, me, the, installing solar. Yeah. They're super strict on it. Cause to get it PTO would is do their, uh, they, <clears> it's they have a lot of, like, lot of red tape. Yeah. So they have a low price per watt. So it's kind of helpful for the client cause they don't, okay. you know, pay that much. Money that's their own community watt. basically. Yeah. It's basically their own community and they produce their own, um, uh, ironically I think one, they produce one, it through solar. Yeah. I think there's another city in, uh, in Orange County somewhere that has their own yeah. utility company. Too. Yeah, there's a few. There's like Imperial Irrigation. There's LEDWP. Um, there is Pasadena. And there's an, there's a couple. There's always a few, um, um, a few little like 
pockets of areas where they do get their own utility companies. Okay. Um, Anaheim has one. Anaheim Public okay. Utility has their own. And and those are, you know, if, if again, solar, like my job, whenever it comes to solar, like I got to see if it makes sense for you first. Yeah. Right? I got to help you avoid the, the scams that happen, the yeah. lies that happen. I want to make my homeowners equipped to make the decision and feel confident in their decision to go solar. Cause I'm not going to sell you anything or convince you of anything. Yeah. You're going to make the decision based off the information I give you. And I'm going to guide you through that process. Right. So, um, but whenever it comes to like those little pockets of, of utilities, really they tend, sometimes they tend to not qualify more than other pockets. So you focus on the, on the meat and potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, and not only the meat and potatoes, but I have to go and follow the intricacies of how people may lie to customers. Because again, I can't assume that a customer is just going to automatically believe me, you know? And what ends up happening is that solar, unfortunately, you get to a point where it's so easy and quick yeah. to just tell the customer what they want to hear and not tell them the truth. Yeah. The customer wants to hear that they're going to get a check from the government. That's not yeah, true, yeah, yeah. right? It's a tax credit. If they owe money, they pay less money at the end of the year. But if they don't owe anything, there's really no nothing that can benefit, right? Yeah. Um, they can basically tell you do a quick and easy install and put ten panels when really you need, you know, twenty five panels. They tell you, oh, it's going to be installed next uh, within two weeks. Yeah, within two weeks. Which uh, one is not, week next is, week, which it'll is be not installed. True. You know, um, y y yeah, it's it's it's. There's they a burn lot it. Of they burn it. They burn it. There's for a lot of things. Else. The city, the the yeah, they burn it exactly. They there was one guy on Instagram who I don't remember his name. I didn't care. I yeah, I didn't care to even remember his name. But he yeah. had said that he he was showing an example of door <clears throat> knocking, and he was yeah. this is how you door knock, and he's knocking on a home, and he knocks on the house, and he tells them. Um, hey, you know what, like, oh, we're the new utility company, we're the low savings program. And the guy's like, I don't want solar, like, my roof doesn't qualify. My, I have a bad roof. And he goes, no, don't worry about it. The government's going to pay for 30% of that roof. I'm like, yeah, dude, that's a lie. Like, stop lying, yeah, you know? Scamming. Like, like I'm, he's going to tell his cousin and uh, someone's going to – his cousin's going to tell his uncle and his uncle's going to tell his friend. Yeah. And all of a sudden, his – cousin's friend's uncle whatever is going to tell me hey i thought the government was going to pay for 30 percent of my roof like no yeah they're just scamming. you know so i'm gonna tell that explain it to the customer and sometimes man like out of 10 times one will go with the person i had one i had one guy who said i have a friend in solar and he says i'm gonna get the rebate from from at from going solar like yeah how much of rebate am i getting i forgot what his name was but i was like that's not how it works. And he's like, well, my friend works in solar, so I trust them. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, with all due respect, man, sir, you should get a new friend because that's a lie. Yeah. It's it's Or he's being lied to by his manager. Or whatever. Yeah, exactly. He's a new, new person in solar. So there's a lot of, man, there's a lot of, you know, nuances. shadiness. Yeah, nuances. But it's my job to make it, make it simple and clear for the yeah. client, right? But yeah. I guess that's my alter ego, bro. That's my karma to, to yeah. hyper focus on the scams and try to help and equip customers, bro. Cause I'm like, bro, whenever I have someone and a, a, like a customer come to me and yeah, they're yeah, like yeah. basically saying that like, Oh, I'm getting the check or I'm getting this. Or he told me just the other day, man, my last deal. Oh, um, they were saying that the system that they currently have is just going to be gravy. Okay. Cause they, they're, they're using a lot of energy and the original company didn't give them enough panels. And some other company gave them way too little panels, came in to add to those to the current system that they already yeah. have, right? And what the rep told them was that the old system that you have is just going to be gravy, that we're giving you more than enough energy and the old system is just going to be gravy. And we're going to add a new meter and we're, we're going to do all this like yeah. weird stuff. It was going to be an illegal. Yeah. It was going to be illegal. But I was explaining to the customer like, no, you need – you don't need 12 panels. You don't need 14 panels. You need like 17, 18 panels. He ended up getting 19. And I need to work with your system in tandem with this new system. Yeah. Like it's not going to be gravy. Your system, your old system still needs to work. So keep your eye on that system. It would be great to tell you. It'd be easy to tell you, hey, here's 10 panels. Here's a low monthly payment. You're going to be totally fine. Yeah. But, and that's what I was saying before when it comes to reps, they have a lot of times I look for the, for the guys who have a business mindset. Yeah, for not sure. a commission mindset. For sure. Because when I give you a 
a a a guy a referral a lead you want to work with like-minded people yeah you don't want to like just waste your time yeah and what ends up happening when you have that business mindset i want you to have a great experience not a good experience i want you to have a great experience with my company with me and i want to be totally honest with you that way in a year from now when you're satisfied with your solar companies hey i have a cousin hey i have a friend hey i have this absolutely but if you come in and you have a commission mindset you want to get your commission and dip yeah you're not going to build a business yeah i mean and, and that's that's the thing man like It's like people, they really, a lot of, not people, but a lot of people have that short term thinking. And it's really like, it's unfortunate because like, that's not the, like, that's not how things really work. Right. I mean, yeah, they work that way, but that's not like the fulfillment. That's not the the longevity of things, you know, like, I think I heard somewhere, uh, a saying somewhere like an old man, a wise old man planted a seed and then someone questioned him. I don't know if it was like an angel or something. And it was like, why do you, no, maybe not an angel. It was someone asking him. And uh, like, why do you plant a seed if you're not going to like enjoy the fruit or enjoy the shade of the the tree? He's like, well, I'm not, but the future generation will, you know? And it's like, that's t- that, 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 type, that type of stuff is like the people that I want to be involved yeah. with and the people I want to be around because then yeah. they're not only looking at for themselves, you know, yeah. they're like, yeah, we, obviously we got to take care of ourselves. Right. We got to take care of our family. That's like, you know, number one. But we also got to like yeah. think about our neighbor, you know, we right. got to be like uh, have compassion for our neighbor because yeah. if they're on that same mindset, same wavelength, mm-hmm. then it's only going to be like a circuitry going there. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. so I'm big on, you know, working with the people, the right people for me. Yeah. Right. Everybody has their people. No, hundred percent, man. Um, and, and what's crazy is that you say that when it comes to like future generation, it, it actually was one of the reasons why I decided to become an entrepreneur. Cause I was thinking like, man, like when I became an entrepreneur, I and basically full-time sales. I was just committed to working at this all day long, you know? And the funny part was that when I decided, when I actually told my uncle, like, hey, I'm gonna, I need to make more money. I'm gonna ask my girlfriend to marry me. Like, I'm gonna get engaged. Yeah. And like, you know, he still needed my help, you know, when I when I did quit and I was basic, he gave me, he gave me his blessing. He was like, yeah, man, I, I'm with you. You wanna go make money? You could do it. Go ahead. And I was engaged, bro. And like about to get married, no job starting off my entrepreneurship. Yeah. And, but, but it's that future mindset of like, I know that maybe I won't get the commission now, but I'm willing to go through these like trials and tribulations for sure. And then towards the end of it, have the tree at the end. So maybe I could, you know, get the shade from the tree for a little bit. Right. For a little bit. But what I, but, my my mindset was whenever I do when I do get married when I do um, have a family one day I want to be able to work at it now, and then build something now, mm-hmm. and then they can benefit from the shade of the tree. Okay, you know what I mean. So that's really what kind of like <clears throat> drew me to be an entrepreneurship because we knew through COVID, bro. If you get if you get a job, how committed are they to you, really? You yeah, know, people like got laid off. People like, got like, laid off. Like I like think it was like business. it was crazy how many people were on unemployment. It was like in the millions and millions and millions. Like what? Like that's crazy. I know? mean, there's nothing guaranteed, right? That's what they say. There's nothing sure. guaranteed. So, I wanted to bring us back. Um, talk about the money. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to kind of ask yeah. you a little bit about the opportunity. Anyone watching this, how they can get involved? Yeah. Whether it's like more hands on or less hands on, or yeah. you kind of. If you can share with me like the dynamic of the solar opportunity and like me personally, I see the value in solar. Sure. I remember back when I was, I think like 21, I had like one of my jobs. One of my first jobs was, um, I was a solar rep. I was a door knocker. Door knocker. Oh, a door knocker. Retainer and stuff. It was a a hourly job. Uh, Okay, cool. But I was young, you know, like I just needed money now, you know, so. I didn't realize the opportunity right. um, with the with the solar industry. With the solar industry, I was yeah. just getting like, I was just being introduced to the solar right. opportunity. I was like doing door knocking in Orange County and stuff. Um, oh, nice. Okay. But as a company that's no longer around, um, that's a lot of that's a lot of solar. A companies. lot of <laughs> a lot of companies, but um, a lot of solar companies. This was a long time ago, so I definitely co-signed for for the solar industry because it's been around for a yeah. long time and it will continue to be around for a long time, sure. especially in the United States and even abroad. Like I've been to other countries around the world, and I see solar. Like it's a yeah. thing. Like it's not. Yeah. It's not bullshit or anything. Yeah. No. It's um, it's definitely gonna be. It's definitely the future. 
I think Warren Buffett said, I've, I mean, I'm sure every solar rep, every solar guy says this quote, but it's kind of true. The biggest transfer of wealth is, mm-hmm. Warren Buff- Buffett said it, the biggest transfer of wealth is going to happen through the energy and renewable energy yeah. um, industry. And uh, so, yeah, like talking about the money, um, the simplest way I could put it is you're saving the client money. So there's a lot of money to be made on your end as a rep, but conservatively, the amount of money you could make is, let's just say, if you're a full-blown rep and you're closing your own deals, you can make, this is is super conservative, the numbers, like five grand per deal, let's just say. You make $5,000 per deal. Multiply that by 100 deals, which is only minimum eight, you know, um, uh, uh, eight deals a month, right? A lot of people- You're a half a millionaire. You're basically- you're half a million. Halfway to a million. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Halfway to a million. Like, so the client, th- no, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> so I was with the client yesterday. Sure. I'm not even disclosing any of the names or anything. Sure. Don't worry. But he yeah. told me he made a half a million dollars last year. So it's solar? A, it, no, 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 no. It's a different business. Okay. But it's a relatively newer business. Sure. You know? Yeah. It's a, yeah. It's a pretty much like a one man yeah. show. No. You and, know? And, and what I've noticed with like any of the industry, you know, when it comes to like life insurance or it comes to like real estate, like a lot of times to make that half million, you need like a lot of people under you. But in solar, you can make that on your own. I'm sure in real estate, if you have like, if you're able to get a lot of clients and you build your clientele, you could get, you know, eight of those. But it's just, it's, it's real estate kind of fluctuates where solar, like everyone wants to save money. Yeah. Everyone kind of needs that edge off, right? Everyone needs to, instead of paying 300, to pay 200. Yeah. So you have that sure. opportunity there. Um, but there's d- basically three different programs. My favorite, my personal favorite is like the affiliate program where I just give you like a referral fee yeah. and you give me your, 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 your book of business and I'm just, I'm a business for you. Yeah, for You're sure. making passive income just by passing me a name and for a number sure. and let me use your name, you know? And then there's like the rep, the full blown rep that makes eight grand, 10 grand, five grand, four grand per deal. And yeah. they, you know, they, you do it on your own. You kind of sell on your own or you could do like, you could become a dealer, which is what I am. Mm-hmm. And you build a team, you get guys, you train them. Uh, once you're able to conquer, you know, um, sitting in front of the homeowner and then being able to actually save them money, being able to transfer that um, knowledge to another person and another person and another person to build the team. You know? so, so I 100% agree with you. Um, but to animate this topic on money, because a lot of people are in the mindset of, sure. I'll, I'll believe it when I see it, right? Yeah. But to kind of flip it in like, I'll believe it and then I'll see it, right? Sure, sure. And so like, how can you kind of give the confidence of people to be able to, um, you know, have the trust into, you know, doing business with yeah. you or becoming yeah. a partner or what have yeah. you? Because a lot of people are talking, you know, they yeah. talk, they talk, they talk, they talk. Yeah. Um, but they have like, it's just fugazi fugazi. Yeah, no. And so That's a great question. Yeah. I mean, me, I can talk from my personal sure. experience. I've yeah. made, you know, a uh, commission with you. I made deals yeah. with you and I have seen it. It's, I personally like it because I know how much I'm going to make right away. Yeah. Um, I've been on appointments with you sure. and different things like that. And so how do you think... W- like you or me or we can kind of create that animation. Make a believer. Yeah. Create, make a believer basically, yeah. you know, not a, I'll see it when I, be, you know, I'll believe it when I see it, but sure. I'll see it when I believe it. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, there's a bunch of different ways, you know, and it, there's always going to be a leap of faith for anything, you know? So, but what I could tell them is you can come to my office, you could see the warehouse, you could s- hear what other people have said about my company and the contractor Nestor. And, but at the end of the day, the, biggest thing on paper that I can show you is this. When you go to a big company, name any huge, humongous company, you are a cog in the machine. Yeah. Okay. You would, you're just a number. You can get 10 deals and Mm -hmm. from you out of the thousand reps that they have, those 10 deals, they really only care to install five of them. You know, if they get all 10, great. If they don't, okay, great. But the, the thing is with you, you have to worry about your business. You have to worry about your your family. You have to put you know bread on the table. So you got to make sure that the the people who are are installing your system, yeah, are gonna install your system. And not only that, they're gonna give you a good experience. So who better than the actual contractor, than the yeah. actual installer, which is me? So I can show you the warehouse. I can show you our customer service team. I could show you the permit runners. I could show you all that. I could introduce you to the main contractor. Yeah, whose and I've been there here. at your office, the new yeah. office in, in yeah. Santa Fe, right? Yeah. And yeah, I see the finance team. I see the 
the, I think they're like the permitting Permit people. runners, you have yeah. customer service I see there. like the little, like not little, but the sections of yeah. the office where yeah. people are doing yeah. different tasks and stuff. So yeah. I've seen it, but yeah. just to kind of create more like yeah. conviction on some, maybe some of the viewers or people that have seen your content, they know Ronnie or yeah. they know Brandon, Hefe Media or yeah. whatever. And they're like, you know, oh, I know you talked about solar, but I don't understand. But like the opportunity is real. It really is. Like, yeah, no, the, the solar is going to be here and it's going to be here for the next 20, 25 years. Right. The opportunity is it, it's there. And the cool part, like I said, it's you're saving someone money. Right. So there is so much money to be made when I'm putting more money in your pocket. Right. And, yeah. and at, at the end of the day, you want to be able to save someone money. Like, and I, if I could show you $300,000 of savings, a million dollars of savings over the next 25 years, just getting a little percentage of that is what you're going to keep in your pocket. Does yeah. that make sense? So, so, so that, I mean, it's, dude, it's, solar is going to be, it's going to be here. I'm going to be doing it for a very long time. Yeah. And the on. fact that, like, I mean, during, you, we, met, we were talking about the pandemic and stuff, like a lot of people are working from home now, like mm -hmm. the electricity bill had, it, it's, is a different bill than yeah. it was like 10 yeah. years ago or whatever. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's a lot. Yeah. You know, and, and what's weird is it's that. It's not $50 anymore. Yeah. <laughs> What was funny is that in 2021 they increased their rates. They increased their rates. Edison increased their rates specifically, 14 mm percent, -hmm. just in 2021. How convenient that it was right after the pandemic. Yeah, you know, and and then they're gonna increase their rates. I can you could look it up. Literally, if you as a homeowner or a rep can literally Google this, Edison six percent increase, and then you'll be you'll get linked to a PDF sheet from so, Edison. So to kind of animate this to get people like more conceptualized on like why solar isn't great opportunity to lock in the price it's like yeah if you could lock in like for example gas prices sure. yeah. back in let's use the 90s or right. whatever the case may be early right. 2000s or, or whatever it was like right. two dollars a gallon essentially that's what you're doing you're locking in the energy rate for a fixed amount of time right where you'll be able to save those savings during inflation right. or what have you. Yeah. Um, and then with California Solar Guys, from what I understand, you guys have a lot of um, incentives or uh, warranties and different things yeah. like that. That yeah. provides a, a even greater yeah. uh, sense of yeah. peace of mind. Yeah. So the, the yeah. So what you said is like 100 percent true. So. What ends up happening is if you, let's just say you go back to when gas was a dollar and I sell it to you at a dollar 10, but I promise you, hey, Mr. Client, this gallon of gasoline is going to stay at a dollar 10. I know it's 10 cents more than what you're paying currently, but it's going to stay at a dollar 10 for the next 25 years, for the next 30 years. And after the 30 years, you're not going to have to pay for any gasoline. You're mm -hmm. going to use your gasoline like normal, as, and as normally as you would now, and you're not going to have to pay for gasoline at all anymore yeah would you take that deal well dude anyone would say yeah, yeah but people yeah, don't see that. stuff like like yeah they don't see stuff in for in hindsight right. they see stuff like in in front like right where they, they see they things after it. the things happen right? yeah they're yeah. like oh why didn't i do that why didn't i invest in yeah. bitcoin why didn't yeah. i do this it's 100%. like dude like that's why we're the entrepreneurs right we're in the, we're in the forefront of yeah. all these things and mm -hmm. like you know um when you get involved with people that you can really trust yeah. and do business with, then you'll have a greater opportunity sure. to yield these, like, yeah. you know, these, yeah. these opportunities. And, basically. That, and that's a skill. That's a skill to be able to communicate. I think Gary V is like a big one too. He's like talking about the internet and all those different yeah, things, yeah. like how these things are the tra the trajectory is to is to go up. Right. And people are like non believers, you know. They. Hundred percent. I'll see it when I. Uh, they'll, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's so funny. Like I'll always tell I'll tell a client like if they're being very like, you know, oh, I don't know, I don't really see the savings. I'll, I'll tell them like if I paid you three hundred thousand dollars to go solar today, would you do it? Well, of course. Okay. What if instead of paying you Mm -hmm. I save you that money over yeah. the next 30 years. Would you go solar? And you know? Can you kind of explain the beauty of going solar? Like people yeah. think like, oh, I got to pay all this money. But like literally what? Yeah. No, I mean, it shouldn't. It's it should not cost you money. It should save you money. Now, you're still going to have to pay for the panels. You're still going to yeah. have to either get financing or however you want to go about it. Right. I don't want to go too deep into like the difference in products or whatever. But the reality is, is that you have a bill. Here is your electricity bill solar just comes in and it replaces it okay yeah. so you're just 
getting having one bill and replacing it with another. Exactly. So not not quote unquote combining it. Yeah. I understand there is like a little nuance with like the yes. meter fee. So I don't want to say yeah. completely replacing it. Yeah. But it's basically replacing it. Sure. Like yeah. Ninety eight percent, ninety nine percent. Right. Basically. And 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 the real the truth is the way I explain it is I include that meter fee in the savings and I'll say hey you know what we'll include this meter fee we'll include all the fees we'll include what you'll pay to Edison because you're just always going to have some type okay. of okay right so then you replace um, but over time eventually you'll get credit maybe not anymore with the new program with NEM yeah NEM three three point oh however my in laws I gave them a a, a big old system um, I kind of gave them a little bit too big of a system really but I get my in-laws a system and they have like a negative $250 bill. Like they owe nothing to Edison. Actually, Edison owes them money, which is the majority of my clients, mm -hmm. right? So eventually you'll, you're, you're going to see the savings um, immediately, but also you're going to see even more savings in the next 10, 15 years, even five years, right? Okay. So, um, but to kind of go back to, yeah, there's a meter fee, there's a little nuance, but, but like I said, man, that's a skill. Right, like any rep that goes into any industry, you know, yeah. oh, life insurance doesn't work because I'm not going to see any of the money. You know, that's an objection. Yeah. Oh, real estate, like, you know, I don't want to get too much debt because if I get this rental property, then I'll be on the hook. And that's an objection, you know. So, like, my job is to see if it makes sense for them because maybe it doesn't make sense for you to get life insurance. Maybe it doesn't make sense for you to get a yeah. rental property. I make it make sense by explaining to the customer clearly yeah. all the savings and the construction and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So, so it's, it's, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's a, it's a skill. It, at the end of the day, you have to be able to be good at communicating yeah. what your product is to the homeowner and then they make the decision, you know? Yeah. Um, no, absolutely. but yeah, man, solar, yeah. Uh, it's so funny because when NEM3 came around, mm -hmm. we saw a huge dip in the industry. Like, and I'll just be a hundred percent. Like there was a huge dip in the industry. A lot of reps yeah. either left, they left or they got screwed over. Yeah. They, they, their, their contractors didn't pay them. Their companies didn't pay them. A lot of companies went under. A lot of companies have rebranded their names. Yeah. They're doing that, some bullshit. Yeah. They rebranded their names into new, you know, so, but one thing that I'm proud of and I'm happy of is that you guys are still here. We're not that we're still here. We're and growing doing, and, and growing. We're growing, and growing, you know, and we're adapting. We've dude, there's been so many changes and yet here we are, yeah. you know, here we are. Yeah. What I like about you guys is that you guys are like firm on your belief. You know, you guys are firm on like where you stand. And I think that is important in all aspects of life. You know, if you're like a door moving back and swaying back and forth right. and you're not like Sturdy. firm, on where you stand, then you'll 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 collapse, you'll fall. Yeah, man. And so yeah. I see you guys. I see like where you guys stand, where you guys are firm. Even some of the people that I've like um, referred and stuff, you know, um, you guys stick to your guns, you know. Sure. And yeah. so I think that's what is making you guys even more successful. Yeah. Part, part of what's making you guys more successful is that you guys are firm on like your beliefs, you know? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, we are, um, I'm Christian. I'm a Christ follower first and foremost. And, um, it's funny because that's really what drives, um, my business and my entrepreneurship. Absolutely. Um, it's, it's not me that wants to get glorified, but it's building a platform to where when I speak, I'm just glorifying Christ and mm -hmm. I'm showing him off, not showing myself off. Right. Yeah. And then you kind of can reap benefits, right? Like it's so weird because I always go back and forth with a lot of Christians and there's this weird, I don't know why the last 50 years is there's just 50, 60, 70 years. There's been this culture of complacency and it's borderline laziness, you yeah. know, where, oh, I don't need to make money. I don't need to get rich. I don't really need to do anything. And it's not getting rich, but it's building wealth. Like yeah. Alex Hermosi, he he's very big on like entrepreneurship and, and being frugal and being, you know, wealthy. He's loaded. Yeah. Um, one of his favorite books to read is actually the book of Proverbs. Like I saw it in a short, you know, um, that he actually likes the book of Proverbs because he uses those principles yeah, absolutely. and applies them to his business. And I'm like, well, if you're Christian and you read the book of Proverbs, right? King Solomon, like, yeah. Like, bro, like use what God provided for you. Like you're not, you can't, it's, you can't convince me that God provided Proverbs, the book of Proverbs for Alex Hermosi, who's an atheist. That's why like a lot of, for the Christian, no, 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 you but know? seriously, like a lot of, I mean, I respect, 
respect everybody's hustle. I respect everybody. And we do need teachers. We do need to sure. exchange ideas and sure. different things like that. Um, but that's why, like, for example, when someone, like, starts saying, like, more on the extreme side, like, you need to do this. is like, this is the way or whatever. Sure. Like, this is, like, like as if it's, yeah. like, a almost like in an idol worshiping, like, yeah. way. I'm just yeah. like, dude, no. Because, yeah. like, I, like, from... What I understand is like my connection to the creator is like, that's everything, you know? And so for me to hand over that responsibility to some guy, you know, that sure. may be successful or sure. whatever, yeah. it's just, it's, I'm doing my, I'm doing the Yourself creator and myself a disservice by, yeah. by, by handing over that, 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 sure. that, you know, that the merit of that. Yeah. And I would say like, I would say that you don't have to be rich to worship money. And a lot of Christians, unfortunately, they make money their idol. I respect everybody's hustle. I respect everybody. And I believe that, yeah, we do need to talk to people like, for example, like therapy and all that stuff. I sure. think it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's useful. Yeah. Um, but when you replace your faith or sure. your connection yeah. to, to God, it's like, you know, you're doing a disservice to, to yourself. Yeah. To yourself, to give that responsibility to somebody, you sure. know? Yeah. Um, like, because this is the way it is not, yeah. you know? Um, but yeah, you were saying before the, yeah, well, what I was saying was, um, that a lot of times, like I'll get criticized with certain goals that I have because a lot of my goals entail, you know, a lot of money. Right. Yeah, but there's but nothing wrong with that. Th and there's nothing wrong because with look it. Because look at the, the thing about it is that the, when I receive more, I'm able to give more. Sure. You know? Yeah. And yeah. I'm giving with what I have now. Yeah. But the more I receive, the more I'm able to yeah. give. And that's how I look at yeah. it, you know, like um like I get I have the the merit of traveling around the world. Yeah. You know, last year I was in France, I was in Spain, uh -huh. et cetera. And like You're Nicaragua. I was in Nicaragua, <laughs> you know, Mexico. <laughs> Nica, Nica, Nica. I know. We're both Nicas. I wanna go to Colombia. <laughs> Colombia. <laughs> Parcero. Don't, no, go, don't go to Colombia, bro. Ching, um, I want to go to Colombia. <laughs> um, um, no, but, yeah, but uh, so, you know, so when I when yeah. I'm in those places, like sure, uh, a, a teacher of mine was telling me, you know, like when I'm d when I'm there to do charity, you know, to, sure. to do yeah. to to make sure that you are doing like one act of yeah. at least one act of, of goodness, you know. Right. And I'm only sharing this because like what we're talking about, like I, the only reason I'm able to do this, these things is because right. I'm receiving from, you know, my clients or opportunities or what right. have you. And so the more that I'm receiving, the, the more, more you can give chances. 100%. I can do these things, you know, 100%. and I, I get so much like uh, fulfillment inside when I'm able to, to, to do, to do it more, you know, I want to do it more and more. And more yeah. More. No, I'm with you, man. And um, I guess the criticism flows because, um, you know, a lot of people, one, a lot of people don't want to put in the work to get, you know, wealthy. And again, there's nothing wrong with wealth, right? You don't have to be wealthy. You don't have to be rich to make money your idol. Yeah. Um, your money can be your idol because, oh, I'm just so broke. Oh, I'm just, I don't have enough money all the time. Exactly, I don't have money all the time. You're always thinking of money. Because you're the effect now, you know? Yeah. You, if you're happy yeah. with or without money, yeah. then... Yeah, I mean, it's not, yeah. it's not, it's not, it's, it's not the the cause of your happiness. Right. You know what right. I mean? The money is not the cause of your happiness. Your the cause of your happiness is is God. Yes, right? it's one hundred percent the Creator. And sure. so, if you're happy because you have money, or you're happy, or you or, don't have money because you don't have or money, you don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then that's where it's worshiping. Yeah. So, but. Now, let's not get it twisted. There's Christians, and I know that there's a lot of Christians that are like, oh, if I declare and I do this and I Jesus is going to, uh, you know, I could do things all, all through, I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And, and because I believe in Jesus, I'm going to get rich. That's not true either. Yeah. Right. But, but neither is I'm going to get, it's I'm going to stay faith, poor. Right? Yeah. It's both. I, I, it's so funny. Like the, the, the best, I was just reading this, the best verse in scripture for being an entrepreneur is Colossians 323 basically work do all things work in all things as you were doing it for christ mm -hmm. right so what's cool and what's so weird is that we're so we're so influenced by christianity we're so influenced by christ nowadays that that even alex ramosi like he said something alex ramosi is an is an atheist right i'm only using alex ramosi as alex okay. ramosi as an example but he's an atheist he's a nihilist actually okay. we're kind of just his belief is and he'll say it we're just kind of gunk we're just big old germs yeah but what he said he didn't even realize it he said something so profoundly christian 
and it was a short on his YouTube. And what he said was that there was a king and Pharaoh specifically, mm -hmm. the king of Egypt, yeah. the most powerful nation at the time yeah. at its highest peak. So he's the most powerful nation. He's, he's the ruler of the most powerful nation yeah. at the pinnacle of this nation's power. Right. Yeah. So he says that there is this Pharaoh. And do we even remember this Pharaoh's name? And no, we don't remember this Pharaoh's name. Yeah. So this is 5,000 years ago. This is the monarch at the highest power. But don't we remember Jesus Christ's name? Yeah. Right? So whenever we look at ourselves and we look at our place in the world, I could even go as far as our place in the universe, Yeah. where we look at ourselves and we think, man, I just want to make sure that I glorify myself. I want to make sure that people remember my name. I want to make sure that people remember me, that my gen... The reality is you'll get forgotten. And yeah. I know it's hard to kind of conceptualize that because we think of Elon Musk and think, oh, well, he'll never yeah. be forgotten. Yeah, we think yeah. of like Patrick Bird-David. I love Patrick Bird-David. We'll think, oh, he'll never be forgotten. But the reality is in 100 years, okay, maybe you're still here. In 500 years, okay, maybe we still remember you. 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 years from now, yeah. eventually you'll get forgotten. But the name that won't be forgotten, my belief is, Christ Jesus will all his name will always be here. Yeah. The reason why we have New Year's is because it's the year of our Lord. It's the year of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So my business, my goal is always to glorify that name. Yeah. Absolutely. Specifically. Because if I try to glorify my name or have people remember my name, it'll fade away. Yeah. But if my business is to target and glorify Christ's name, absolutely. it will never fade away. No, absolutely. Right? And I think like one of the lessons there is like to be humble, you know? Like, mm -hmm. you have to be humble. You can't be too high. You can't be too low. You have to be in that middle column. You got to right. be in that center. Right. Um, like Kobe, nothing is ever as good as it seems. Nothing is ever as bad as it seems. Yeah, I mean, I think that's where we start to, like, really tap into more wisdom. When sure. we can, like, be centered. And, yeah. and, you know, we're not that important, you know. Like, yeah. we're not that important. But we can bring a lot of value because sure. at the same time, in the same, in the same, in the same idea is, like, for us to think we're so little is an ego, and 100%. for us to think we're so big is ego. Is also ego. And yeah, so I agree. it's that middle. It's like we're confident in you know walking with with yeah. God, uh, the things that we're doing that we're doing it for the for the sake of God, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time we're not like not believing in our capabilities and our in our capacity. Right. And at the same time, we're not going like overboard yeah. and, and just like forgetting about right. the right. the reason why we're doing things. Yeah. And, and I think that like a lot of, especially like, like us Christians will all, all speaking for myself, I recognize praise God that I was able to recognize the fact that I knew that I would have to grow a skill. A lot of people think that if they just believe yeah. in certain things that it'll be given to them like that. Yeah. But like Colossians three will say work as you're working, do all things as if you're working for the Lord. Yeah. So when I started doing entrepreneurship and I started door knocking, I YouTube how to door knock. I YouTube yeah. questions, mm -hmm. right? I put in the reps, right? You know, YouTube how to bench press and then go yeah. bench press, right? And then you you how to close deals, how to ask questions, right? Mm -hmm. I, I you know I got someone that actually was able. Another uncle of mine, not Nestor, another uncle of mine was like a bad sales rep, talks a lot. The yeah. good sales rep. Will ask questions, ask good questions, and listen, and, right? and, and listen, and not only just ask, but actually listen. When Active I actually listening. listen to you, and I and I help you with what your concerns are, yeah. what the problem is, I'm actually able to help you and close more deals like Absolutely. that, right? So there's like a negative connotation with closing deals or sales reps, but the reality is, I'm just. I'm just helping you make the decision. I'm guiding you to the decision. And I think that comes decision. with the experience, you know, because then you really yeah. like are understanding the person in front of you or the, you know, the whatever the case may be, sure. you know, so you can really dissect what the need is. Yeah. And that's also like it's that's a skill in itself. You know, you have to look into like if I'm about to go for the close, go for the close. Right. I'm going to give, I'm going to give someone the price for the story. timing. got to be right. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's not just what you say. It's how you say it. it's not the questions that you ask. It's how you ask the questions. Yeah. Right. You know, if someone, if I'm about to give someone the price and they're like this old Ronnie, You're that didn't be like, know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, old Ronnie right. that didn't know, but yeah. I would go and I try to close yeah. someone who was straight up. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can't, you got to be able to say, 
before we move on. But you know any what? Concerns, you it, know? Sometimes I'm like this, not to, but sometimes I'm You're like focused. this, but I'm open. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not a hundred percent like this 100%. means like, no, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Sometimes I'm like this because I want to be like this, right. but I feel like, like right. cause this is like closed off. So this right. is like, like when you're like this, like what psychology teaches is that like I'm in a state of like defensiveness, pr- defensiveness and yeah. protecting myself. Sure. But sometimes I do this and I feel powerful. For concentration. Yeah. I feel powerful, mm-hmm. you know, but it, just because I want to be like this, I feel good. Like sure. this. I'm like, it's like a, almost like a form sure. of meditation. I feel. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and that it's, it's the, 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 be- the better reps will distinguish a person who's like this will distinguish. Is he being defensive or is, does he feel powerful and confident in this yeah. position right so your skill is to distinguish that for sure right so I've and we teach that at the the california solar and we guys teach academy. that at california solar guys man academy. come in i'll tell you i'll show you exactly yeah. how it is i will oh bro yeah don't even no i think started, it's man. no if, seriously it's really important to surround yourself with the right people yeah. like the, having the right clients the right people involved um yeah. because not I don't think every dollar is the same, you know, like mm-hmm. not all money is the same money. Like yeah. you can get a lot of money from one client, but that money, as soon as you get it, it can go away yeah. quickly because it's not like it doesn't have the same sustenance as right. like maybe another dollar that you earn, right. but it maybe it's lower amount, but it has like a lot more sustenance yeah. lasts longer and it will yeah. go and do more. And I'm, yeah, I believe that it's like, what vehicle are you in? Right. What vehicle are you in? Are you in a vehicle where you have to close? I know guys who close 10, 15 deals a month. I remember interviewing uh, a girl. It was my cousin's friend. But they're spending all of it. They're well, spending as much as they get. Not getting. even that. Not even that. But I'm like, okay, 15 deals. How many? How much money did you make? I made like seven grand. And they're like proud of it. I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, this is with respect. But I made seven grand last night. Mm-hmm. Like, this is with love and respect. If you can allocate those, that clientele, to mm-hmm. a vehicle that's going to make you five plus, four plus, possibly yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 no, sure. plus, 12 Cause, plus. Because solar is a high ticket item. Mm-hmm. And like I am co-signing this. I continue to co- co-sign this. I'll, <laughs> I will always co-sign this, you yeah. know, um, that you guys are doing things the right way. I, mm-hmm. I know I've seen the checks come in. Yeah. I There's no like Fugazi, Fugazi. Yeah. It's like, you know, the, once the customer, they got their yeah. proposal or whatever, it's like, Hey Brandon, this is give or take. This is what you're gonna make. Sure. All right. I feel yeah. good. I feel confident. Yeah. Any of my you know associates, my colleagues or whatever, they know what they're making. They sure. feel good and they want to continue to yeah. bring more business. And no, and, and that's what the smarter people, business people are doing because yeah. that stuff compounds and it grows. It doesn't go like like chasing the commission. Like it's yeah. here one day and then gone the next. Yeah, and the way like I'll explain it is. Like there's a biblical term. It's by their fruits they shall be known. Yeah. And when you look at a fruit of a business who doesn't pay their 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 sales reps, like eventually they're not gonna sell for you. Yeah. Eventually they will leave. Eventually they'll go on to see and allocate their skills to someone who will pay them. Yeah. You know, so you can see by the fruits of our labor we have grown and you can just tell man when when you have a shady contractor, yeah. You it you may not even meet the contractor. Mm-hmm. You may, so bar none, have a shady contractor. You may not even know who he is, right? Yeah. Or here, the broker per se, the dealer, mm-hmm. is just connected directly to the contract. You will always meet the contractor. It yeah. doesn't matter who, any Joe Schmo who only, any Joe Schmo who comes in and sells one or two deals a year or the guy who makes 20 deals a month, right? Yeah. 30 deals a month. They're going to get to know the contractor. Yeah. They know they're going to get to know me. They're and that's like, team. I'm like, I know I'm digging in this and I'm not like trying to sell or convince anybody, but it's really, it's like, your belief, bro. It's yeah. really important like, yeah. to be like around the people, the right people, like the people that are like, literally like, they're not going anywhere. Like they're yeah. they're Like I said, you guys are firm on your stuff, you know, like there's mm-hmm. no like today, this tomorrow, that like, yeah. it's just like, it's just yeah. consistent and like, right. From business, you know, like maybe someone's watching this. They don't really know about business. They had a job their whole life, but sure. they want to like make yeah. additional income or whatever. Like yeah. it's important to get next to the people that are doing things right, like as pure as possible. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's what will last. You know, I can go to my clientele. I have the confidence to go to back to my clientele, you know, and say, hey, do you know anyone? 
anyone that you know. And I've, I mean, just the other day, I got a, I got a, a text. Hey, this person wants to go solar because, and it was an old client of mine. Yeah. And unfortunately, it, you know, they, it, they lived in a shared roof, so it didn't really make sense. Um, but at the end of the day, I get those coming to me. So yeah, I get business all day, coming to me. all day. Yeah, all day. Yeah. So that's it's the like, power of branding. Yeah. That's the power of branding. It's, yeah. Branding pulls people in. Right. Marketing goes out and you get the people. Right. Branding, Branding pulls, pulls people, people in. in. Yeah. And that brand of mine is an ethical company, an ethical solar company that will do yeah. right by the client. I'm not I always. It's funny. It's kind of like whenever I tell the client um, about certain nuances in solar. Yeah. I always ask them. Always. Obviously, you have to execute this correctly. But yeah, I always ask them, do you want me to tell you the truth or do you want me to tell you what you want to hear? Mm hmm. The truth, or do you want to hear? A lot they of people always don't want the truth. A lot of people don't. A lot want of people truth. don't want the truth. So I'll ask you. I could tell you what they you want to be hear. in the lie. They want to be in the illusion. I could tell you what you want to hear. It is, I'm, I could put flowers and perfume on a dead corpse and make it smell good. But the reality is, is that I have to tell you the truth about solar, and then you, based off that information, make, make that decision, right? Decide. So it's very easy for me to take advantage of you. But again, I will tell you: Do you want the truth, or do you want what you want to hear? Yeah. So it's the solar is get on this ride. Get on this roller coaster because it's not always going to be as easy as it is now. Yeah, it's gonna eventually five years, ten years, yeah. and especially with more sa shady the, uh, sales reps. Yeah, the saturation and yeah, what have you saturation, and also there's going to be more lawsuits happening. Happening, you know. Yeah. So my job, my goal, my passion is to make sure that those people, you know. I can't expose them directly. They'll you wanna, sue me. You want to have my reps. I mean, you want to build your business as much as possible, so you could go invest in Nicaragua, Nicaragua, and Honduras, Ecuador, and, Honduras, and, and yeah, Ecuador, sure. right? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, man, it'd be cool to. Yeah, man, I've had. A, I would like to do a lot of stuff. I, I yeah. Patrick Brett Davis is a cool guy to look at. Where he did the insurance, and no one. Really Dude, I'm like insurance. freaking. I know. I know Nicaragua from front and backer. Yeah, so. that's Dude, dope, bro. I was driving in the mountains and no everything. Way. Dude, I'm like, bro. they know they know me out there. Yeah, yeah. you're like a king. I got cred. I got cred. I got, I got cred out there. You bro. got cred. Yeah. Damn, street cred. Oh, aquí viene Brando. Have you been out there before? No, bro, yeah. I haven't. I've only been to Costa Rica when I was go. 11. You should go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, I uh, I want to go. It's really uh, economical out there. Yeah, I want to go to. We, me and my wife want to go to a few places. We want to go to like where all of Game of Thrones was was oh, shot. Okay. Is that in Europe or something? That's in Europe. That's in like Croatia. There's like Scotland oh, okay. and stuff. So yeah, I guess Europe. Your wife is um, she's Mexican. She's or? yeah, full blown Mexican. Yeah, Mexican? full blown Mexican. Okay. You know, Mexico has a lot of good places. I want to go to Mexico City. I'm not going to Mexico. <laughs> Mexico City <laughs> is a, like Mexico. out of all the places, Mexico City is like yeah. I think the most modern place really in Mexico. Really? Yeah. I heard, like, yeah, I, yeah, I heard a lot of good things about, uh, Mexico city, Cancun, Puerto Vallarta. Well, Cancun is like, if you want to party, you know, is it Cancun is I if you want to party to, to relax. Nah, it's like a party place. I just, I, yeah. I'm just grinding, bro. Cancun well, grinding is, and watching. I haven't been to Cancun, but Cancun's a party place. If you want to like experience the culture, you go yeah. to like Guadalajara, you go to, I haven't been to Mexico city yet, but it's yeah. like Mexico city. Yeah. There's Monta Monterrey. Mm -hmm. There's a Durango, Durango, yeah. Durango. There's um, there's Sinaloa. There's yeah. like those different places in Mexico. What were some of the things that you would like to do over there when, like, let's say you have some more free time or some like extra Me? money? Yeah, over there in Nicaragua. So how how I could mean, we actually help out like Nicaragua per se? Um. Because one of the like like me me personally or the people out there just in general like what would you do? I mean, uh, I mean not to talk like too early or anything, but I mean I have like intentions and in, in yeah, expanding yeah, yeah. over there for yeah. sure like i mean i but like, have friends and wells stuff. or they have a food shortage or is it work shortage is it like you know like i think it's just i think it's just um financing they fin just need yeah. financing like if you if is you it like up, financial literacy or no it's just um fine like they need they they don't have money there like okay. there's no money there's money there but it's like there's no there is there's no commerce per se. Like it's, it's just it's not different. It's times. just different. Yeah. You know, like it's not as um, like the commerce is not like out here. You know yeah. what I mean? It's a different system out there. Yeah. But the roads, I was gonna say the roads, like the highways, it's very modern and it's like really like the highways, the sure. highways. It's sure. like they're really like well put together. Okay. Yeah, they're okay. like, yeah, you yeah. drive out there, it's like it's it's inc it's incredible. Yeah, my sister is going with uh um is going to Honduras in the n in next month. Oh wow! I'm um, in June. I'm not going, but um, yeah. um, I yeah. I don't know anything about Honduras, but I know yeah. that it's close. So I was in a um, I was in a city called Estali, 
And Esteli is um, north, northern Nicaragua. And that's close to, um, it's close to Honduras. So the Airbnb that I was at, it was like Spaniard um, style yeah. uh, Airbnb. Sure. And they had a lot of uh, like Honduran uh, uh, stuff there, you know, like. Yeah, uh, like a. Uh, like architecture or well inside the house like the products that they had like oh. the, the appliances and whatever like the things yeah. the decorations or whatever in the house yeah was a lot of like hondurian products yeah um i mean i'm assuming because either they're hondurian and they, it was close to the border okay. of honduras that's cool so yeah uh, nicaragua i think nicaragua and honduras are basically neighbors right and el salvador yeah el salvador honduras and nicaragua and costa rica so, so i also visited uh i go there I go there often, okay. um, uh, San Juan del Sur, and oh. that's at the border of Costa Rica. That's like the border city, and there's a lot of tourists right there. If you go there, you'll see, like, a lot of, like, people from all over the world. That's cool, yeah. man. Yeah, Costa Rica is really fun. Costa Rica, I mean, from what I remember as an 11-year-old kid, yeah. it was a really cool place, but I remember staying at La Playa de Con Concha, La Playa de Concha, something like yeah. that. Like, like it was a, um, um, it was a, a um oh my god what do you call those things um the shell like a, a uh -huh. seashell it was basically instead of sand instead of sand it's seashells okay and it was cool it was cool oh, to okay see cool it was kind of a weird experience because you're going there everything hurts your feet hurt yeah. your body hurts because all the seashells are like poking you yeah was that on the but it was pacific beautiful. side of the ocean i don't or? know you remember i was 11 years old man i was look it up it's kind of moco so i know i should look it up we're like um, uh my pretend assistant hey look it up uh so yeah, so. uh, Jamie. <laughs> yeah, Jamie. Uh, hey, look it thank up. Thank you. It's yeah on the Pacific. Jamie, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look it up, Jamie. Time. Jamie. Yeah. What is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got you, bro. Yeah, good good job, man. Good job, there. man. It was there. It's, already, um, it's on that side. But yeah, <laughs> man. Like I have, I always think about like what's life after solar. I I had the I come I came to the realization that I will never ever retire. No, for I sure. Always. Why? Do why? Why retire? Because we're not even working. We're like, yeah, you know, it's fun, bro. Yeah, like we live. This life. is dope. Our, our work is life. Yeah, you know, we get paid to live. To live. <laughs> yeah, Seriously, for real. Like, that's yeah. really like what it is. Yeah, not I mean, obviously. Gummy, obviously, we have to do work. You right. know what I mean? Right. But like, you know, like we love what we do. Yeah. So it's not. It's like as if we are not working. Yeah. Because like work per se, like doing something that we're like we'd rather be doing something else. Yeah. You know? No, I, and I would like love to be. I was telling you before. I'm like, I would love to be a producer on like a, a, a solar a rep slash Christian show too. You know, N make I don't know some main character whose uncle was a contractor and he used to do an accounting or whatever. Yeah, that that could be like the so main your character. documentary. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But like, I would love to like be a producer. You know, yeah, Lord yeah. willing, get enough money and like where I could like spurge on this. But like to to help like christian media because yeah. i feel like i would love x-men bro but there's so many anti-christian things I, I mean i love x-men 97 the new season that's come uh -huh. out and there's a lot of there's a few like subtle anti-christian things there's a lot of shows that are very like anti-christian yeah. and look man it is what it is i'm sure you have the producers the creators the writers they had some church hurt and that's fine i appreciate the art yeah, for what yeah, it is yeah. you know but um but i would love to like produce like a Joshua movie, like the Book of Joshua. Yeah, like we have like the Prince of Egypt, but like the Book of Joshua. Yeah, should be a series because all I you see is Israelites conquered this city and Israelites conquered this city and this yeah. city. It's like, bro, you could make that into a movie or I a TV watched, show. You know? I just watched Kingdom of Heaven. Okay, and uh, it was really good. Yeah, it yeah. was re it was really good. Uh, so the king, I mean, you you probably saw it. I mean, I, the is, reason yeah. why I watched it because I saw clips on Instagram. Yeah, and so. Um, the king of uh, Israel at the time, he uh, had leprosy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And he was like a, a, a noble king. Sure. But he had leprosy, and he believed that it was due to past transgressions sure. through maybe the bloodline or what sure. have you. Um, and so uh, there was a peace sure. there, quote-unquote peace, where Muslims, Jews, Christians were all living in, sure. in Israel, in Jerusalem. Sure. Um, but there were bloodthirsty people, yeah. you know, people that are just, you know, they're taken over by the ego, yeah. taken, taken over, um, and um, and they were committing acts of sure. of heinous acts yeah. against one uh, specific group. And so eventually in the movie, um, Orlando Bloom is protecting Jerusalem, and they they capture one of the kings that um, he. Uh, 
he overtakes the the, the king that had leprosy. He takes okay. him. He takes he takes over the throne, right? Sure. And the and Orlando Bloom they didn't want to take his place because uh, the the princess at the time was married to this man, and okay. they didn't want to do like some fugazi fugazi. Yeah. He wanted to stay firm yeah. in his belief with you know sure. uh, with Christ, and um, and he didn't want to 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 kill the sure. the 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 soon to be king okay. because he he felt like it wasn't walking in the path right right you know so yeah so i would love yeah man i mean and I, so like i, I yeah. watched it and i thought it was a it was a great movie yeah like, it's it, it's incredible because i mean we look at what's happening now in in, in the world dude like with mm-hmm. with palestine israel conflict yeah. Um, in the Middle East and and, yeah. and all of that is just, it's something that's still happening today. Yeah. And I mean, I'm confident that things will eventually, um, you know, we'll come to one yeah. eventually. Um, but it's just crazy where, you know, you have this turmoil uh, still happening thousands yeah. of years later. And it's worse now because there's not swords and shields now. It's missiles and and it's there's there's more all types um, of things. Yeah, things that we don't even know about. Yeah, there's there's more. Um, um, oh my gosh, what's the term? Where basically they people get hit incidentally, like you're you're targeting one person, but you're uh, uh, collateral damage. Yeah, you're basically there's a lot more collateral damage because of the tools that we have now. It's not a bow and arrow and sword and shield. It's missiles and and guns and weapons and stuff like that. So you're able to hurt a lot more people than you know you intend to or at least maybe you did intend yeah. to or you didn't intend to right um but it's 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 hard man and i think the solution is really I, i'm like the solution here is dying to your desire like you said someone's bloodthirsty yeah right bloodthirsty and dying to like your bloodthirstiness dying yeah. to your pride and your ego is the that's the only way any of these things will actually be resolved so there's external problems and then there's internal problems For sure. right most of the time, all the external problems can be just be solved by internal problems. Yeah. If you solve the internal problem, you'll solve the external problem. For sure. And what happens is that there are hearts that are hardened. There are hearts that are um, that, ha- that are deceitful. There are hearts yeah. that are evil, man. There are yeah. hearts that are evil. And there are people that are, they have intention mm-hmm. to do bad things. Yeah. And I believe the solution is where we put our heart at and where yeah. we give our heart to. And I believe if everyone gave their heart to Christ, mm-hmm. this wouldn't happen, you know. But yeah. again, we, we we live in the reality. We live in the real world. Not everyone's going to do that. Not everyone's going to yeah. want to change their heart. Right? Yeah, I mean, look, it, it's funny because I mean, uh, obviously, you know that, um, like, I practice reading the Torah, sure, what yeah, have yeah. you, and so like, I agree with you. You know, like, yeah. eventually, what will happen is that everyone will have to uh, have an understanding of yeah. the Creator of who god is yeah and so that's when things will be different you know right right um, and and it's just it's because like christ will even say die to yourselves pick up your cross or paul says die to yourselves jesus says pick up your cross and follow me yeah what what he what he means is like your desires right now yeah are basically controlling you mm-hmm. you know you have to control your desires and this is the same thing when it comes to like entrepreneurship bro so yeah. like to kind of bring it back with entrepreneurship but again i, I love the the kingdom of heaven story i've always wanted to watch that movie i never you watch it go watch it yeah. this weekend i know i'm probably gonna do that with my wife it's really um, good yeah um but what happens is like to bring it full circle when you aspire for great things good things when you grow in your life the the the, the times where i've grown the most has been where i have denied myself yeah Meaning sacrifice when when we are i remember going to the gym with you at crunch when it was outside right we were going at 5 30 a.m yeah right you don't want to wake up early in the morning to go yeah. do that right you don't want to eat right that. and work out right if i have i i would i, w- I had a, a an actual trainer and i would have I, I, me and my wife would have a tradition of going to Cane's every Sunday, and we love Cane's. Yeah. And but I got disciplined enough to when I have Cane's at night, uh, mm-hmm. in, in, you know, in the morning. Yeah. Right. Count my calories, count the protein, and at night have chicken and broccoli. Okay. No rice, nothing. That's dying to yourself because yeah. initially you want to just have Cane's and you want to go have a burger. I'm a yeah. dude. I'm a slut for burgers, bro. I love burgers, dude. Um, burgers are the. I'm best probably gonna thing buy some burgers because, like I said, I freaking um, I got like food poisoning yeah, yeah, yeah the maybe a couple yeah. like a month ago or something and me. i had i had eaten 
I'm gonna sh- freaking say the names. I don't care. Um, <laughs> next, next burger. I eat next burger. Dude, no way! I got and sick from it too. You got so that's where I think. Dude, I got sick. yeah. Because I got. I, it was either Years that ago. or Chipotle, right? And so uh, I well, stopped eating both. Chances are, bro, Chipotle. Yeah, I stopped. I eating guarantee both. you, because ten times I had next burger, it was like one out of the ten times I got sick. Chipotle. Yeah. I'm eight out of ten times, bro. I'm not feeling okay after Chipotle, bro. Well, I'm eating I'm at home now. Okay. Yeah, know, I'm cooking food. That's the best. Like, yeah. It's like organic, good yeah. whole food. Yeah. I feel yeah. stronger than ever. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm I'm with you, man. Um, I, uh, you know, you you schedule certain things and you 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 become disciplined with eating out, saving yeah. money, but also just you don't want to eat out that much because it's not you, you don't. It's not healthy for you, you know. Yeah, you get no, like inflamed, sure. you know, you no, get healthy sure. stuff. Yeah. So I'm, I'm thank God I'm blessed with my wife that she, you know, man, people are gonna hate me for it, but I need to find she's one of those. A, she's a dope cook, bro. She's a hell of a cook, man. She would if she was in the NBA, she'd be most improved player of the year. Because you know, at first, and she'll admit it. She's like, oh, I was the that Kate, good at first. She's the Kate and Clark, or what? bro, she's <laughs> like, dude, she she cooks like, man, this yeah. is. I don't know if it's she's heavenly or demonic, me, man. man. Do you ever do you ever remember Joe Rogan talking about how? He was talking about how he loves jujitsu and how really it's not like the buff, super like strong yeah. fighters. It's really the nerds, yeah, um, that end up becoming in, in jujitsu. Do you remember he kind of said Mark that? Mark Zuckerberg. Do you see him with his like gold chain, his gold chain, and his beard and stuff? Yeah, bro. I saw He's him before it became like the memes and stuff. I saw him. I was like, dude, he looks like he got some swag on right now. Yeah, <laughs> you know. And then it, was it like, ain't it was, from the social it, network. And, you know, and it was like a thing. I think he's like tapping into his like his new alter ego or something dude who knows man who knows yeah. but um what's cool is that like a lot of like a lot of people who like look into entrepreneurship like i don't think people realize that if you're a nerd you'd be actually a really good entrepreneur bro mm-hmm. and like i'm a huge nerd that's why i'm a really good entrepreneur no, i'm just kidding yeah yeah, um, yeah for but sure. i'm a I'll, nerd too i mean i read a lot of books so <laughs> okay you okay. know that's yeah. my that's where my nerd nerdiness yeah. comes in yeah. you know it's just the reading part like yeah yeah, but, like, what I was saying was um, in terms of – I think we were talking about, like, the game, the old hobby that I used to play, man. I gave it up recently. Yeah. And I'm telling you, it's the most technical, fast-paced, mm-hmm. like, competitive game to play. Okay. And, um, I, dude, it's weird, and it's I, it's I can't even explain it. Yeah. But that actually, like, translated into, like, entrepreneurship. For sure. Like, and it translates into, it translates into a lot of things. Yeah. Um, being able to, like, be disciplined and get better at something. Yeah. And then put it into action and then go to the tournaments. Like, I'd go to the tournaments, drive out to places, drive to San Diego, yeah. drive to Verdugo, you know. And, I think and the, like, the bestness of things, it it's easy, it's easy, it's easy to spot. Mm-hmm. Like when you're the best at something, it's easy to spot whether yeah. it's video games, yeah. whether it's basketball, yeah. whether it's whatever the case. Yeah. Like when someone's the best at something, it's like, you know, you, you, know, you know it. Yeah. You know. No, and I'm with you. And, and my goal is to be the best. My, uh, my You men, are the best. Yeah. You know why? Because but I'm here with you and you're here with and me. And I'm there with you. <laughs> there you you're go. here with me. By, and, and I only want to work with the best, man. 100%. I only want to work it. with the best. I'm with you 100%. Now, what's, what's cool is that my uh, uncle, not Nestor, but another uncle, John, my Uncle John, he's the one that kind of trained me one-on-one to do sales, how to close, how to ask the right questions. Yeah. And um, he said... He told me, and I'm his nephew, so he obviously like loves me. I think I don't know, you know, Dio John. I don't know if he loves yeah. me, but he basically said, "I don't want you to be good at this. Yeah, I want you to be the best." Right? He didn't even say great. He said, "I want you to be the best," and Absolutely. that's the goal. That's the strive. Absolutely, right? it's the competitive. It's the competitive itch I have, and um, when it comes to like walking that line, when it with being the best and being Christian and yeah. you know still being humble, um, that tug of war is fun. You know how they say the journey is fun? You have Absolutely. to follow the journey. That's kind of the journey. That tug of yeah. war between being humble and being the best. Because you're not the best like if you think you're the best, right? Yeah. But you're the best. But you know what I mean? Best. You're being at two you're being yeah. in two places at the same yeah. time. Yeah. You ever you ever hear the meme the the it's from Game of Thrones? Tywin Lannister. Like let's says, let's use let's use I don't mean to cut you off, but no, let's good. use Anthony Edwards for an example. Everyone's sure. in love with him. Everyone's yeah. in love with him. Yeah. And he's like people are him. like, he, you're the best. And he's like, I'm not the best. But he's yeah. the best. Yeah, he, you know? he says don't compare it to Michael Jordan and then continues to do exactly what Michael Jordan did on the court. Yeah, and I, and I don't mean like re- respectively to every generation. Like every generation has a, the best. Like sure. Michael Jordan was the best in his time. Kobe Bryant was the best in his time. LeBron James was the best in Not his true. time. And then now Anthony Probably Edwards. What's that? 
Curry was better than LeBron, bro. Nah. Don't at me, bro. Same LeBron, LeBron is like, the, he has the people, you know, like they have Michael, Michael Jordan and LeBron in the category of the greatest of all time. Yeah. And I argue Kobe Bryant because that's my favorite athlete of all yeah. time. Um, but each generation had its best athlete, right? Yeah. Whether it was Michael Jordan, whether it was Kobe Bryant, uh, LeBron James. Anthony Edwards, the only argument that we were making before the, we shot the podcast was that he will need to be consistent over yeah with the type of play with out. his type of play for a decade. Right. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, and that the flame will won't go out if you have a purpose. So meaning so me, I have my purpose, I have my future end game, right? When it comes yeah. to entrepreneurship, when it comes to me wanting to make money, what would that money be for? Am yeah. I making money for money's sake? Yeah. Or for sure to Basically, no, I mean, fine I'm in the same in the same boat. You know, yeah. like, I want to make a lot of fucking money, <laughs> man. I want to make a lot of fucking right. money, but I want to do a lot of good with that. Money. Yeah. You yeah. I mean? and, and like I want to do a lot of good and 100%. I am doing good. I am doing yeah. good with the money with what that you I have now with, yeah. the, what, with yeah. what I have now. Yeah. But I want to make so much fucking money so that I can like spread my light. Sure. Like that's my yeah. that's my goal. Like yeah. really, you know. Yeah. So I can have more conversations like this. You know, you're sharing a lot of the things that you believe mm -hmm. in on this podcast, and that's helping other people. You know, yeah. and the same thing with me. And like yeah. that's what I want to maximize. Yeah. And and I always tell people like not to conflate with what you say, but kind of like to add on. Yeah. Um. I always tell people it's like whenever you say I'll I'll make more money when I make more money I'll give more. Yeah. That's the reverse. You do it now. You do it now. Yeah. And then when you get more money. You'll, you'll be able to give more. And then you do right? more once you get yeah, more. And yeah, and you get more, yeah, right? I, so 100%. And what what, what, ha what happens, and it happens a lot, and you see a lot of entrepreneurs, bro, when they start something, they kind of fade away from it. And I think because their fire burns out. So like, they're not, they're, they're not, their heart and mind are, are not yeah. working together on it. Well, it's what, like maybe they have like an exterior motive, which is like sure. uh, money or whatever, but it's not yeah. like what they're really, really yeah. Would want. Yeah. You know? And, and what, yeah, like, like you said, like an exterior motive, like money, but what happens is if you like love money that much, if you love it, you're really going from one hamster wheel to your nine to five yeah. to another hamster wheel of just chasing money. The reason, money, the reason why I resonate with solar so much is because of the culture Sure. of what solar brings sure. and the opportunity that yeah. complements the yeah. culture. And that's why for me personally, like I resonate really yeah. well with solar. Yeah. Like, the culture is great. It's like being in the media company, sure. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're making a shit ton of money. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? And so yeah. that's why I really resonate with solar. Yeah. Um, and so solar is really unique, not to cut you off, but solar is really unique in the sense that all three parties win. The banks yeah. are always going to win. The rep, the rep is going to win, obviously, because yeah. he closed the deal. Yeah. Usually what ends up happening is a homeowner can or cannot win. But in solar, if done correctly, obviously, mm -hmm. the, the homeowner will win. Why? Because yeah. if I sell you life insurance, that's an, that's an extra add-on yeah. per month. If I sell you a car, that's an extra add-on per month. Yeah, you're right? already paying it. You're already paying the bill. Yeah. So all three parties are winning here. All yeah. three parties are making money and or saving and money. And I think that's like, I mean... That's why I'm like lingering. That's why I'm here. That's yeah, why man. I've been around, you know, because it's like, it's kind of like if you have like business knowledge, if you sure. have like a little business knowledge sure. or some general business knowledge, like you'll see the opportunities on where it makes like yeah. a good sense, you know, like yeah. it it's not, doesn't require a genius to yeah. be like, all right, this is like an opera, good opportunity. Yeah. And you, you see fit how yeah. you want to kind of yeah. uh, invest your time into that. Right. Right. And be open to the to the industry. Be open to the opportunity. I'm always open, man. I'll get DMs in my in my Instagram and they're like, Are you open to making extra income? Yeah, for are sure. Are you tired of door knocking? Are you, I'm like, one, I don't door knock, but are you in, are you open to making uh, making extra money? Yeah, I'm open. I'm open if you're open. And yeah. uh, eventually what happens is they're like, Well, I have my flag planted. So See you later. But if you're open to my opportunity, then we'll talk. Yeah. But I'm not going to be open to yours. Be open, man. You know, I'm generally, if you have a business that's going to make you a million dollars, that can make me a millionaire, I'm open to it. But I haven't found another industry like solar where I'm going in making a lot of money per deal, being able to make 500, be able to be a one percenter, be able to make a million dollars. And, and just know? to reiterate, like, just to kind of re-educate, reiterate, like, the I guess the capacity or the uh, let's just use the word capacity like sure. like 
I'm somebody that's watching this podcast and is like, man, I don't got time for that. Like literally, you can refer the business. Yeah, you can become. I don't know. You 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 too. Yeah. Educate so me on it. so so basically, like like I said, there's there's three programs essentially. We'll call them programs for lack of a better term. But I have a lot of affiliates, referral mm-hmm. partners, where I'll get. Hey, I have a friend that wants to go solar, and they send me over a number. They send me over a name, and I call them up. Oh, hey, I'm so and so's friend. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We were looking at it. You know, and then they have their concerns or whatever. I mm-hmm. help them through it. That's one aspect. I give them cash. I give them money for just for you write that. them a check. Just I write them a check just for that. Just you give me one of your clientele, yeah. give me a phone, name and a number. Boom, here you go. Yeah. You know, and then there's the rep, right? Where you you either learn under me, and you'll make full commission learning under me, and then you go and make full commission when you go out and you do your sales, you get your leads, yeah. and then you have dealers you have the guys that have a team that are training right so there's many avenues that you could take mm-hmm. a lot of times it ends up being where you're like level one level two level three not that any level is better than okay the so there's level one there's level two and there's level three yeah so start at level one per se or yeah. level two per what se. tends to happen is this and this is just what tends to happen can right. a, can a can a level three come in straight straight in? Yeah, one hundred percent. Level three. You could go. You don't have to start off as an affiliate or a referral partner. But what tends to happen is this: they people. I'm ten- a level three now. Yeah, <laughs> you're, level three, bro. you're level infinity, bro. Yeah, infinity, um, level infinity. What, what tends to happen is this, right? What yeah. tends to happen is I'll have an affiliate. I'll yeah. have a referral partner. I pay them the money. And really, at the end of the day, yeah, they get surprised. They're like, "Dang, I made this much, and I didn't even do anything." For sure. Yeah, man. I am telling you, I'm, I'm thankful for your your business, man. Thank yeah, you for uh, you know for sure for your thing. And so we want to like make sure we like remind our friends and family, sure. the people in the universe, like what this yeah, opportunity your, your is. Your inner circle, you know? yeah. Like we invite you, we invite you to the office, right? Hundred percent. Either this, my office, sure. or your office, 100%. and like get get to know, like network with people. Yeah, it, like. I think people underestimate the value of networking. networking yeah. Like it's freaking incredible. It's, it's so cliche, bro. It's so cliche. But what do they say? It's your network. Your network is your network. <laughs> your network. Your network. <laughs> it's true. Your network is your net worth. But you know what? And at the same time, like, I mean, everyone has an agenda. They always have an agenda. But sure. like, tr- like work on not having a hidden agenda when you're networking. Because I like, I'll use yeah. like the business mixers, like some of the ne- like not so polished business mixers and it was always like people you trying to, to come get to the my business, business. Yeah, yeah it was always like people yeah. trying to get business yeah. but it's like it's like how i'm looking at it is like networking like how i can like yeah. bring value or mm-hmm. you can bring value to me or like what you said already mm-hmm. be open just be right. open like i don't right. know how right but maybe something can happen you no know what I mean? and, and, and and it's the same thing and i always kind of reflect on like i love having a bunch of affiliate partners i sometimes like it more than actually having a a rep that works under me yeah because i don't really have to train anyone i just get the lead and i go close it right yeah for sure but it's the same concept that you do with door knocking you're gonna knock a lot of doors you're gonna get a lot of no's before you get an actual yes yeah you're gonna network with a lot of people before someone actually becomes a legit referral partner with you an affiliate with you right so there's the affiliates but what tends to happen is the affiliates will end up seeing the money and go, yeah. well, hey, I think I could do this. Yeah. Can I go with you on an appointment? Yeah. On an appointment with you, with this friend. I have another friend. Can I Can I tag along? Sure. Yeah. I'll give you full commission. Perfect. Yeah. You tag along with me. We help with the client. Full commission. And I know we're coming to an end on the podcast. Yeah. I know, like, I got to go to Glendale. Yeah, I, I, I got to go to Glendale, do yeah, some stuff, yeah. whatever. <laughs> um, but... Just to kind of... You could just like, take the chopper though, right? I know, right? Hey, you didn't ask me who my alter ego is. You didn't ask me who my alter ego is. Hey, but you know what? Um, just to kind of give a little more clarity, spread a little more clarity yeah. on like the opportunity with solar, like can you maybe share like some quote unquote success stories either from yourself or yeah. any people that you've seen in your environment, in, your, in, in, the, in the company that's like transformed? Maybe we could say from... Uh, a financial standpoint, sure. but just like in a total full circle standpoint, yeah, like yeah. How, how has you seen opportunity to be like a, a, a great vehicle for yeah. transformation? Yeah. Well, I, uh, you know, I'm, if I'm trying, I'm trying to be as humble as possible, but I'm an example of someone that didn't really know sales. I had a diff- a, a, a few different sales jobs and um, you got a, you got married yeah, so through I, this transformation. So I quit my job, no income coming in while I was engaged and then we got married and then yeah, uh, we're still, we're still married and we, and I grew my business since then, you know? So every year I could say that my business has basically, if we look at my W2s, essentially 
increased 40% every year. It doubled, more than doubled, mm -hmm. and then increased like another 30, 35%. So you just see the gradual increase every single every single year. Are you incorporated or no? Yeah, I'm incorporated. You're incorporated? Yeah, my, so you pay yourself, W2? Yeah, I pay myself. Yeah, so you get a salary? No, I don't. I don't. No, okay. I don't. I uh, I don't have myself on a salary. I just, everything's just like kind of like a business expense. I'm an LLC. Okay, so you LLC. get a, you get a, uh, uh, a W9. Y yeah, I get a W nine. Yeah, so I you get said W two. That's why. No, W two is like for the. Employees. No, but you said W two. That's why. Did I say W two? You said W two. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know. I didn't say W nine. Yeah, I didn't know if you meant. Um, <laughs> yeah. W nine, or if you so, were paying yourself as an employee. So yeah, because that's 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 fine too. You know. Yeah, yeah. So what what, but like some success stories that I had. There's been a, a, a lot of success stories in the business, like um, in in our office per se. Um, we know. I mean, I've seen people. it. I've seen yeah. it, yeah. We've seen some people. I know some people that were dead broke, and because of solar, that vehicle propelled them. I know a guy that he's on my team that, you know, he it's very hard for him to sell it's just yeah. he, and he knows it we've talked about it like he's not a i guess we would call a natural salesman but he's been able to close deals you know and yeah there's another guy who was an installer who like i helped train and he's able to close deals now you know so these are like so you went from installer stores. to yeah closing deals but also clientele's where i have clients that are like dude like i have a cousin who is paying 300 bucks and he paid less than me a yeah. year ago he he would pay less money than I am. I hear I have a hundred and eighty dollar bill. This was years ago, obviously. Yeah. Hundred and eighty dollar bill for solar. I have a big old system producing a bunch of energy. And I'm I'm saving a lot of money. My neighbor is paying five hundred paid five hundred bucks last year. Here I am yeah. paying a hundred and eighty. You mm -hmm. know? So um there's a lot of my church they went solar they yeah. got a negative two hundred and forty seven dollar bill wow. um a couple months ago. They were they had a seven ten thousand dollar bill yeah you know so um they had their project they I, they referred me to another church where they had a twenty thousand dollar bill you know mm -hmm. twenty five twenty eight thousand dollar yeah. bill right and we now. didn't even get into the commercial side of things oh bro yeah but, i mean next that's time. fine we next could do time. it on the next episode <laughs> so we'll we, we can probably uh circle back to this and have like uh, like we don't even we can't even imagine the the success stories that sure. we'll be having in the next couple months. Yeah, we'll do another one towards the end of the year. Sure. Yeah. Um, and yeah. and we'll focus on the commercial and then yeah. share some of the like success that yeah. we're having. Like this summer's around the corner. People are thinking solar. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have more people interested in getting not necessarily getting solar, but wanting to to join learn the business. sales. Yeah. They want to learn. They want to learn yeah. more sales. You yeah. know. And so. All of the above, man. Yeah. All of the above. Yeah. No, it's a it's a good industry. Get in now. Yeah. Get in now. The what's sure. the saying? It's super cliche, but the best time to plant a tree was ten years ago. The second best time is now. Yeah. Get in solar now. For right. Sure. A lot of people are scared. And with the new program in M three, which we didn't even need to get into, but a lot of those scammers, unfortunately, praise the Lord, a lot of those mm -hmm. guys that were salesmen that were sleazy salesmen. They're fading out because just, now you have to actually it's, be a it's consultant. Just it's just because it's it's what it is is they're it's just un, they're uneducated. That's yeah. what it is. You yeah. know, they're they know what they know, right. and unfortunately, so, it burns it for a lot of the other people. Yeah, but we know we're finding the right the right, right. the right things. We're finding yeah. we're finding them now. So if they're uneducated, then their clients are also uneducated. Mm -hmm. Where you're gonna you come with me? I will educate you. I will yeah. show you guys how solar works. Yeah. That way you can build that and con communicate that to your clients. And that's why I'm like, make, I keep on money. like co-signing you. Like, this is why it's important to be working around the people that either you want to be like or that resonate to like yeah. who you are as a person. Yeah, man. You know, um, I'm a big believer on sticking to your guns and sure. your instincts your intuition whatever yeah. variation and like if something doesn't fit right something doesn't seem it doesn't seem right mm -hmm. then stick stick to your gut stick to your guns um and um yeah i mean i i feel that you guys are very like not stern but you guys are st steady in like your your yeah. stance and your belief and your, your, yeah. your beliefs and like who you guys are and like I would recommend you guys to my grandma. Yeah. You know, I would recommend yeah. you to, I feel confident that mm -hmm. you guys are not going to do some Fugazi Fugazi, yeah. you know, because I already have experienced it. And so I'm glad that you were the first one to do an episode here in the, the Hefe office. Media podcast. Yeah, dope, man. Yeah, I'm, it's, I'm it's, honored. It's 50%. Uh, this feels nice. Yeah, 50% done. <laughs> we got some panels, new, some more panels coming in um, this week and getting them installed. We did a remodel here, so we're working on a lot of, lot of things. Cool, man. But I'm really uh, grateful 
for you to have you here. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna cut this episode up and share it, yeah. and you know we're gonna be able to uh, spread this information to more people, get more people to you know have a fixed bill, um, you know save a lot more money, get more. And at the same time, we'll be able to receive as well, and then yeah. share that with more with people, people. You know whether it's in now. Honduras or whether it's in Ecuador or yeah. Colombia, Nicaragua, <laughs> or in in Europe, Mars, or, or, yeah, whatever. You know. Um, I'm, I'm excited, you know, you know, like, uh, I have a lot of things going with my company and sure. my, and my brand. I got a lot of things going on. Um, and so I'm super excited. Uh, like I said, super grateful to have you here. Yeah, man. Honored, honored, bro. This was Brandon Estrada with the Jefe Media Podcast. Until next time, guys.